Hi, my name's Shlomo, and I'm a human beatboxer. And basically the story behind all this science and beatboxing um, stuff is about a year ago I did some work here at the Science Museum um, and we were looking about, you know, we were looking into what's really going on when you beatbox and I thought it'd be really interesting to try and find out a little bit further what's happening. So we've done um, two different experiments in the lab, which you'll see on this film, um, and then today we're at the Science Museum for a live experimentation session. And then all of this you'll see at the Human Beatbox Convention, we're going to present our findings to share with the world the research we've done. Um, hopefully this will lead on to a much larger research project where we can do some really serious in-depth research, scientific development and find out really how on earth it's all done. But for now, welcome to the Science of Beatbox 2008. I'm Shlomo, I'm out of here. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to be doing uh, in a minute, um, we're going to take a little tiny flexible scope with a little just a tip, and we're going to be looking with the scope via Daniel's nose right along past his soft palate down to his vocal folds. And we'll be looking and seeing what his larynx and the muscles around the larynx, the muscles in the pharynx, actually do and how they contribute the sound that Daniel makes. Okay, ready? Mm. Here we go. No other lights, please, just for a sec. Okay, let's head up for me. Let me know if there's any discomfort. You may just feel a little tiny something at the very beginning because the nose is just a little bit narrow at the very beginning. So this is the edge of the nose. We see that Daniel has a little septal spurs are going to go around. We're inside the left side of the nose. It's the inferior turban on our right. Now say he. If you tell the bone to you, You know what? You deserve a glass of water. Oh, a glass of water. I think that's the most original so nice. recording that Fantastic. we've done in a long time. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Very good. Right. That was mental. <laughs> so what we see here, this is the back of your tongue. This is your epiglottis which actually protects the vocal folds when you swallow, yeah. but also is used in certain sounds, particularly in twang. Uh, and this whole structure right here is the larynx. What you see here is basically the vocal folds closing and opening. You see, here's the vocal folds, yeah. here's the vocal yeah. folds widely open, uh -huh. and we can actually see down the windpipe. So you were probably taking a breath in. And then when you did the vroom, vroom sound, mm -hmm. you probably had your vocal folds closed and constricted and were pulling your your, 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 your yeah, whole tongue and the back of the pharynx down yeah. to create that sound. You can see here that the base of the tongue is working terribly, terribly hard most of the time, quite consistently, you're pulling it right back. What's also interesting is that the arytenoids, which support the vocal folds, and I saw that a few times, are slightly asymmetrical. This is the right side, it's actually working harder than the left side. There's actually some scissoring that's going on there uh -huh. as you're bringing one vocal fold in more than the other one probably to create a little bit more more effort at some times. And that's not normal, is it? Well, it's, it's, it's a variant of normal. Uh -huh. And what we also see here is that the vocal folds are held quite close together, so there's a lot of muscular activity bringing the back of the larynx, the arytenoids, towards the epiglottis, toward, towards the front of the larynx, squeezing everything together there. So yeah. it could be in you a feature of, yeah. you know, musculoskeletal tension that you're using in order to produce some of the sounds. I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah. 
With that sound, there's not much use of the vocal cords, no. I don't think. Quite a lot of the lips and intro or pressure. Yeah, That's you're, what you're, yeah you're breathing fairly quietly at the level of the vocal cords. So that, that kind of maneuver is actually quite safe from the point of view, from a laryngeal point of view. One of the first things that I think we can say clearly is that there's a lot of supraglottic activity, uh, that means above the vocal folds, with a lot of a lot of squeezing of the lateral pharyngeal wall, a lot of use of the constrictor muscles, a lot of use of the tongue base musculature, mm -hmm. a lot of use of the muscles that, that are used for swallowing. Looking at Daniel's larynx, I didn't see any evidence of damage to the larynx. So, certainly to date, there's nothing on this examination that suggests that anything that Daniel has done has been harmful to his vocal folds.